four starts. Well, Barry, believe it or not, I expect to see the real Pinkman Thomas. I think Thomas's biggest handicap is the fact that his consistency as far as his attitude and his concentration in the ring. In the past, he's always concentrated on other things outside the ring. Tonight against Mike Tyson, I'm expecting he's going to concentrate and use the jab. The jab will be the key punch to keep Mike Tyson off balance. All right, before we get to that, on the undercard, the IBF heavyweight championship isn't often that an undercard fight is for the championship. Larry Merchant, the last time you and I were in this same place, we saw the warm-up act really get more applause than the headline act. More of same tonight? Well, if uh, Thomas decides to come in here and hold on to the champion the way Bonehugger Smith did, anything could happen. But what we have here really is a fight off to determine the next challenger for Mike Tyson and incidentally to fill the vacant IBF championship. It's good to see some young, fresh blood in the ring and in the heavyweight division. Actually, I say these fighters should be ranked seventh or eighth someplace, but in the mad, mad world of heavyweights, it's often that the water comes to the top. But to answer your question directly, this could be a pretty good fight. Interesting fight. Couple of boxers, neither guy really known particularly as a banger. Who can bang might decide the fight. Tony Tucker has already entered the ring. He's a guy who really has been known as the invisible contender. At least that's his own choice of words because he really hasn't drawn much attention. One of the reasons he hasn't drawn much attention is that he really hasn't beaten anybody. He did beat James Broad and that kind of catapulted him into this title shot against Buster Douglas. He is a boxer, as you saw his record, 33 up and none down. But again, the biggest question of course, who has he fought? He fought much of anyone, and one of the reasons is that he has a father who is the equivalent of a stage mother in boxing, a stage father, Bob Tucker himself, once an amateur fighter and his manager, and everyone who's around fighting knows that he has kept him from fighting quality opponents. That may lead to a championship fight, but it doesn't lead to a championship where the real money is. Oh, he said some interesting things. He says he doesn't want to leave this one to the judges, and yet he's a guy who really has not been known particularly as a knockout guy. As you look at his father looking on at his son. Here's the other side of this fight. Buster Douglas, 23 wins, three losses, and one draw. Most of the losses were in the early part of his career. He lost to David Bay in David Bay's first professional fight, but he also lost to a guy by the name of Mike White, and in fact was knocked out by Mike White, who was a former winner of the National Tough Man competition. So he's a guy who's been up and down, but he has been beaten Greg Page, and that's the one that catapulted him into this. And here's his father, Bill Douglas, another stage father in boxing, who's no longer his manager. He's been sort of uh, shoved aside for that. But Billy Douglas was a spirited, tough middleweight and a light heavyweight in the 50s and 60s, and his son is going to have to do exactly what he used to do and just out-hustle his opponent to win tonight. Lots of sartorial splendor in this one as well. As you look at the shoes, actually of Tony Tucker, those are not the shoes of Buster Douglas. Buster Douglas had told us that he was gonna, gonna come in here wearing scarlet and gray shoes. And the reason he was gonna do that was because of Ohio State. He's from Columbus, Ohio, and his manager, John Johnson, was a football coach under Woody Hayes at Columbus, Ohio, at Ohio State. And he was gonna wear the scarlet and gray shoes, but he hasn't done that for some reason. It really has nothing whatsoever, frankly, to do with the outcome of this boxing match. So it's Buster Douglas against Tony Tucker, this for the heavyweight championship amongst the IBF. Little to choose, really, amongst the numbers, as you could see here, the weight difference of five pounds in favor of Douglas, but Douglas, interestingly enough, was once as little as 208 and as much as 261. So he has had that much of a variance. 227 today, and he said really that he feels the best at about 240. So we'll see what this weight does for him. And here's our computer toy punch stat, which gives you a statistical profile of the fighters. Here you can see what Tucker and Douglas have done against some recent opponents. They throw about the same number of punches. Tucker has landed more. Tucker is the sharper and more athletic fighter. Oddly enough, Douglas throws more jabs than Tucker does, but he is going to have to out-hustle Tucker, wear him down in 15 rounds to win this fight. Let's take a look at the rules in this one. And of course, the most important rule, which was not here, which Larry just mentioned, 15 rounds. We're going a long way in this one. 10-point must system. Three judges will score the fight. The referee does not score. There will not be a standing eight count. Fighter can be saved for the bell only in the final round. And the three knockdown rule has been waived. Now let's get to the action. We'll go to the center of the ring. The ring announcer here in Las Vegas, Chuck Hull, and we'll meet the fighters. Chuck.
Ladies and gentlemen, representing the International Boxing Federation at ringside this evening is that body's president, Mr. Bobby Lee of New Jersey, and supervising for that body is Mr. Al Goodman from the state of Florida. The officials assigned by the Nevada State Athletic Commission for the next event of the night, the judges are Chuck Giampa of Las Vegas, Nevada, Ed Levine of Miami, Florida, the timekeeper is Jane Broadfoot, counting at the knockdowns Mike Lachella, and your referee is Mills Lane. This is the semi-main event of the evening, 15 rounds of boxing for the IBF Heavyweight Championship of the World. Introducing, in the blue corner, fighting out of Columbus, Ohio, weighing in at 227 and one quarter pounds, with a professional record of 23 wins, three defeats, one draw, one no decision, with 15 KOs. He's ranked number two in the world by the IBF. Ladies and gentlemen, here is James Buster Douglas. And in the red corner, from Houston, Texas, weighing 222 and one quarter pounds. His professional record consists of 33 wins, no defeats, one no decision with 28 KOs. He is rated number one by the IBF. Here is heavyweight Tony Tucker. According to Douglas, these two fellows have sparred perhaps a hundred rounds over the years. You think that how will have any effect on this fight? I doubt very seriously, Larry, because I think now it's a different story. I think both guys have developed, and this first round should indicate that. Buster Douglas said first round was very important to him because it would indicate whether or not he has to chase Tony Tucker. He doesn't want to have to chase him if he could help it. Right now, Tucker's right there for him. I can tell by the way that uh, Buster Douglas is sticking out his left jab. A lot of snap, a lot of power. There's a big difference because with Tony Tucker, Tony Tucker is, is more so the mover, more so the boxer. He's more apt to stay on his toes a little bit, although now he's flat footed. His punch is not as devastating as Buster Douglas. So many times the one win can really turn a fighter's career. And in Buster Douglas's case, he really was, I think it's fair to call him a mediocre fighter, up until the time he beat Greg Page. Now, maybe it was a descending Greg Page, but nevertheless, it had to give him a lot of confidence. And that wasn't a bad right hand. Another confidence builder. Yesterday, I speak of both guys, they both were debating who had the quicker hands of the two. And I think it's both guys have the same amount of speed and having punch. Tucker, Tucker is going to have to at least get Douglas's attention, or Douglas will know that he can basically walk right through Tucker. Well, also uh, with Douglas' style, he's more of a plotter. He walks in and uh, tends to wear his man down. I think here against uh, Tony Tucker, he has to be a little more aggressive and just cut the ring off. The problem a lot of guys have made, even Marvin Hagen made the same mistake, follow with me. You have to cut the ring off. And cutting the ring off, I'm not mean just actually following the guy around the ring. She steps to the right, she steps to the left. Just shorten the ring up. Fairly good combination there by Douglas. Came with the right hand behind the jab. <laughs> it's 
is extremely warm here in Las Vegas today, and we have a thermometer with us at ringside, and it is 90 degrees, even though the sun is starting to set. It was up about 104 just about a half hour ago. First round, we're going 15 here. What I see in Dunn is the fact he's dropped the left hand, a bad habit. What Tucker should do, he should throw a jab to the body and then count with the right hand. Tucker got a quick left hand in at the bell. I thought that Douglas was a much more positive force in that round. Much more determined to, to take the fight. Bit, you know, because you hit me with the jab, one, but you got to keep on jabbing. You understand? And don't don't try to stop. So you didn't do one two there. Give me a little ring for the call. You want to get the mouthpiece in? Yeah, leave the mouthpiece in. It's all right. It's all right. Now you just uh, let me spit. What spit bucket in? Get a spit. Jab, change your pace. You've been, you've been there. You understand? Because you turned over, but you didn't put a whip with it. There okay? you see yeah. Douglas's father, Billy Douglas, giving him instructions. Yeah, okay. Get a little bit up more, but we didn't do it. Okay? And there is Tony Tucker's father, an onlooker. This is Michigan and Ohio State, Barry. Tony Tucker from Detroit. As to Douglas from Columbus, Ohio. And oddly enough, it's Tony Tucker who's wearing the Ohio State colors. He's wearing the scarlet and gray, and that's what Tucker, rather what Douglas was going to wear. Good stinging jab by Buster Douglas. And also, the reason he, has, he gets that snap is he steps in with his punches. A lot of guys, especially having a heavyweight division, as they jab and they back away because they don't want to get hit. Douglas is a different story. He's stepping in with the punch. Makes a a uh, major difference in the power. Again, I feel that Tucker is going to have to at least get Douglas's attention, or Douglas is really going to start to take control of this fight. I thought the left hook by uh, Tony Tucker pretty much uh, got a little respect uh, just before the bell sounded. Good shot to the body. We'll see what you have to do, what Tucker should be doing rather, is putting his punches together instead of just throwing one particular shot. You need to throw punches and punches. Those are both on the arms. Consistent jab by Douglas. In fact, it is surprising that Douglas is jab. He's, he's the boxer and Tucker. Douglas is snapping that jab pretty well too. It's not a lazy jab at all. Well, what, what he's doing, Barry? He's going up and down. He's going downstairs. He's bringing it back upstairs. And now, again, surprising, he's on outbox on Tucker. I expect to see more left jabs by Tucker. Tucker had a very impressive career as an amateur. He has a style that, that really befits an amateur fighter, a good amateur fighter. There was a left hook by Tucker, and it wasn't a bad one, and that definitely did get Douglas's attention. I see Tucker's a little bit too straight up for me. I, I think he should bend a little bit more at the knees. He won't be as susceptible to punches. You notice how he stands straight up. All you have to do is throw a straight jab and he's gonna land as he runs into you. There's a jab again. Now we talked about what a good amateur Tucker is. And Tucker slips down. Now this is a man that has hurt his knee in a fight and was down for 15 months as a result of that. 
Pass and know he's officially un unbeaten, uh, Barry. He, the hand of his opponent was raised after that fight, but through some successful politicking later on, the decision was thrown out. Wait a minute. He slowed down. Let's take a look and see how that happened. He was backpedaling from a right hand, and as you saw, his leg slipped back onto the press table here. It was back in 1982, in August of 82, that he dislocated his knee in the third round of a fight with Danny Sutton. The fight was ruled no contest, and he didn't fight for 15 months after that. I do get the feeling, Ray, that they know each other very well, and there, there's still a bit of a feeling out process trying to see which one can assert dominance and neither one willing to uh, throw caution away yet. I said earlier that, uh, you know, the guys had sparred some few years ago and they pretty much know each other, but yet they've changed. But I doubt very seriously. I think the way they approach this fight here, that either fight has changed at all. That was a right-hand lead by Douglas that started that little flurry. We see now a more aggressive Douglas. And this is the type of fight that's going to win for him. He's going to need to back up uh, Tucker and work the body. He has, I'd like to see more body shots thrown by Buster Douglas. He seemed to be the bigger of the two and the stronger of the two. The mistake a lot of fighters make, bro, they don't get that instant respect. And the only way you make them fight respect you is to hop right on at times or sting with a good punch. Douglas right now is fighting like a guy who's been here before, and, and he hasn't. He hasn't been in any situation that even resembles this. Countering right hand by Tucker that time. That was still plotting in, but what's happening as he gets in with his right hand, whether it lands or not, he spreads his stance a little too wide. That's why he can't come up with enough hook. And you'll notice that from time to time he throws a punch, and then all of a sudden he appears to be off balance. Good body shot by Tucker. Now the hands of uh, Douglas are starting to drop. Again, Barry, you know, Douglas' hands are to his side now, Tucker's, at his waist. Tucker's starting to find the head of Douglas. Again, you notice that Douglas is off balance, and again, that's because of his stance. He throws the right hand, and he brings that right foot up towards the to left foot. This is indeed right the right hand. A counter right hand would land. Good double hook. Right. Tucker. One fell a little bit short. That right hand of Douglas is a little bit short also. Tucker looks a little bit tense and stiff to me, Ray. I don't know to your trained eye whether that's true or not. Well, he seems like he's waiting too long to get his punches off. And coming up, the big one for the WBA and WBC titles champion Mike Tyson, challenger Pinklin Thomas. The once champion, will he be a future champion? And there in his locker room, is Mr. Tyson. Gold shining from his mouth and from his fists, iron. Don't get no freedom. Don't get no freedom. If you do anything, you shake one out. Don't give him none freedom because you're staying there boxing out, boxing him. You just go on and make the shovel over here where you can get in the punch and then catch him the angle. Peace. Get him out of here, Mr. Come on. Come on. Come on.
So we start the fourth round. Tucker into red, Douglas into white. This for the IBF championship. That one minute rest gave Douglas a breath of fresh air. You notice his hands are back up there. It's important in the corner to know how to revive a fighter. And Mills Lane warns Tucker of low blows. Tucker should be throwing more jabs instead of trying to be so defensive. And that's the reason Douglas is coming in. Now we've talked about the heavyweight division at nauseum, but earlier we saw a fight between James Broad and Greg Page. It was truly one of the great dogs I've ever seen. And here's a couple of young fighters so far, both doing a pretty good job, both showing a pretty good jab. Well, we see some fresh faces here, and also these guys uh, quite naturally had the potential to become better once they sharpen their tools up. Incidentally, Greg Page won the decision over James Broad, one that was debated by just about this entire audience of some 12,000 people. Horrible decision, if you'll pardon one man's opinion. With Tucker, the mistake Tucker's making, uh, and the reason he's not landing consistently is because he's throwing one punch. There he throw, he attempted to throw a left hook to the body. He needs to throw both hands. Because if one doesn't land, the other will. Again, though, he knows right hand land, but he can come back with the left hook. Well, it looks to me, Ray, like Tucker might have stepped in about a step here. It looks to me as though he's starting just a little bit closer to Douglas. He's picked the pace up quite naturally. And I noticed that Douglas is moving away, move, starting to back away. See, right here, he's just about, I'd say, two, three feet away from Douglas, where earlier, he's probably four or five feet away from him. And talking to, uh, talking to someone like a bitter man who's never been given just due. I mean, this is a big opportunity, and maybe his last opportunity, so I think he'd better take advantage of it. Yeah, that's what he said. He feels this is his only shot. He feels if he loses this time, he's not going to get a second try at it. He said, they're going to have to carry me out of here. Hey, Mr. Yeah. 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 Unofficial, mm -hmm. official, official. Don't How do you score start. the fight so far? Definitely. Larry, I've got a three to one for Tony Tucker. I think he grabbed the last three rounds by scoring the harder jabs. And if anybody's throwing combinations, I think Tony Tucker's doing it. Bust is only throwing one at a time. Well, you and I disagree for one of the a few times, Harold. I have it exactly the opposite. Douglas ahead, three rounds to one. Okay. You think you gonna pull out on him? He jab, huh? Do it sometime. I think you probably heard in Tucker's corner. Tucker himself said, "My muscles feel tight. I can't get myself loose." Well, that's the reason. I figured that there was something wrong because Tucker has a better jab than he's displaying here. Good right hand by Douglas, and um, he's not using it that much. A lot of guys make mistake of not really loosening up in the dressing room. And that's a horrible mistake because once you come out here, it's time to go to work. I see, we've always talked about the officiating here in Las Vegas. Now, you're saying that Tucker's not using his jab, and yet when we talk to Harold Letterman between rounds, he says he is using his jab, and that's why he has him ahead. That's what makes boxing, I guess. Well, no, the fact, what I mean, Barry, is the fact he's not using it enough. He's using it quite naturally, but I've seen more consistent left jabs from a Tony Tucker. It, it appears that Tucker wants to throw double jabs. He's starting to just faint with the jabs. Pity Pat. 
He needs to put a little snap behind him. Douglas seems to be the stronger puncher of the two at this juncture of the fight. But Douglas is taking the leverage off his punches. I mean, he's just using brute strength now. Um, because again, he, he puts both feet together, which takes away the power of his punches. What Tucker should do, as he come in, throw an uppercut. Catch him coming in, catch him leaning in. Douglas trying an uppercut, came with a left hand behind him. Barry, that was a good example there of catching Douglas on the way in. That's what he needs to do, catch him on the way in. There, again, a good shot of him, putting both feet together. This is when you can create a knockdown because you're off balance. There's a quick right hand by Tucker. But he needs to throw more than one though. And there was a good He's combination hurt. with a left hand rock Tucker. He's hurt there. And now Douglas presses him. Is he pressing him enough? 20 seconds remaining in this round. Can Tucker get through it? Still seems to be hurt. He was definitely rocked by that punch. Obviously, Douglas didn't think he was hurt that much. He didn't really go after him. Douglas uh, went to college briefly, a junior college, as a power forward, and he showed some of the power right there. I thought he stopped Tucker right in his tracks, but he didn't follow up. And let's take a look at it right here. On the right, followed by a left hind head, and there you see Tucker's legs buckling. I'd have to say the rebound went to Douglas. And another view of the same thing, a right hand. He's been, he's, he's been much more liberal with his right hands. He's taking more chances, Ray. And I think in the end that can influence the judges. Tucker has been just too controlled almost. A lot of times players don't know how to steal rounds. Sometimes go forward. Relax. Well, you saw those punch stat numbers that not only is Tucker not sticking the jab out very much, but when he is sticking it out, he's not scoring with it. He only scored with two out of 14. Well, you know, I stated it's stealing around. In fact, the way that Douglas can steal around is by hurting Tony Tucker, and he did that. Good right hand. Left behind him. Douglas now is putting his punches together. He's not just throwing one punch, he's coming back with something. There was another left hand that caught Tucker backing up. Now you notice Douglas is not showing any type of respect for Tony Tucker, so Tucker has to initiate some respect now. He has to stand his ground and nail Douglas coming in. When you say nail him coming in, Tucker doesn't really seem to step in too much. There was a right hand by Tucker. A counter behind the jab, you think? Well, as, as Douglas is rushing in, because again, going back to what I stated earlier, being off balance, you can catch a man with any particular shot, more so the inside puncher. A right hand would be a good punch to throw on Douglas, because that left hand of his is dropping. There was a big left hand by Douglas. That was a great shot. Douglas is beating Tucker on the strip, just outpowered. You see what I mean by this all strength? Mills Lane warning Douglas about a butt. when Douglas comes back because he finishes up his combinations with the left hook. He 
has a tendency to do it on occasion, but he doesn't do it often enough. Sharp jab, I think. That's a good round for Douglas. Again, the left hook, he follows up the left hook. I think that's going to be his bread and butter. Well, again, coming back to the word that you used earlier, respect, and Tony Tucker is just not showing Douglas that he can hurt him. Buster Douglas is a three to one underdog fighting in my judgment like a three to one favorite. Good round, good round, good round, good round, good round, good round, good round. I'm starting to feel you ain't got second degree, okay? You steal this, uh, steal it, go. There you see two punches thrown and missed. Douglas follows up with a left hand right there. more time. Same result. Taking a fight on him, taking away. Yeah. Hey. Turn your head this way so I get the same. Pop it good, right hand, step left hook, break right back at again with step it. Step into the guy. Uh -huh. And step with the jab. Mm -hmm. Little anxiety in Tucker's corner, I would think. Telling him to step in, which he hasn't done, as we mentioned in the previous round. We, we will have a heavyweight champion in this fight, but we'll have an inexperienced heavyweight champion. So after this fight, they must really handpick their fighters. <laughs> Unfortunately, the most likely to be picked is a fellow named Tyson. <laughs> and that would not be the That's one that you would handpick. <laughs> <laughs> That's an unfortunate situation there. Douglas should rip some of those jabs to the bottom, to the midsection, or to the chest area. Let us slow down, Tony Tucker, just a little bit more, so that left hook of his can land. There was a right hand by Douglas, and again, and right behind it with another, and Tucker in trouble bouncing off the ropes. Douglas should stay there. Now, he needs to stay close to Tucker. Because if anything, he's starting to wear his man down. But again, it's just obvious that Buster Douglas just has no respect whatsoever for Tony Tucker. He just doesn't think he could be hurt by Tucker's punches. Tucker well, hasn't shown him that he can. Well, I expect a little bit more from Tony Tucker, and I don't see that much from him. With Douglas, Douglas is the initiating the, uh, the control of the fight. He's putting power behind his punches. Okay, we're step back to me now. Step back. Here we go. That was a right hand by Tucker, and that might have gotten Douglas's attention. But again, it was a good punch, clean punch, caught him flush, and didn't hurt him. This guy's a puncher with arm. Good shot. Now, now you see what happens, Bear, when, when you throw a combination or throw a series of punches. One of punches, one or two punches are all going to land. Push up, come on. Douglas is starting to breathe through his mouth a little bit here, and that's something that you've always said was a danger sign. Also, the hands start to jump to the side.
Tucker got into it a little bit more right there, but I don't know if it was enough to salvage the round. Good round. Huh? It's time for the championships, son. You ready to do now? You can't let him leave. You got to take over. You know what I'm saying? He can't keep the pace with you. You're too fast, but you can't wait and let him get off. You got to get off first. Okay. Come on, baby, please. Get off first, there ain't no sweat. And there's Pinklin Thomas trying to get off first in his dressing room and work up a sweat. Coming up. Second shot. Let's a go, Mr. real Come heavyweight on, championship on. fight. Get him out on spectral right. To point out here that Douglas is under contract if he wins this fight to meet Tyson next. Tucker is not under contract yet. And in Tucker's corner, they're just telling him what appears to be pretty basic. You gotta get off first, but it's easy in the corner. It's not so easy once you get out there. Well, for Douglas, that hand pick is going, it's going down the drain now, if he should win. He's trying to take a breather. Not too many punches being thrown. And in fact, with Douglas, Douglas really, he seems to want to try to take a breather. And that has given Tony Tucker a chance to, uh, to come on strong. This is the eighth round, scheduled for 15. Mr. Douglas has never gone over 10 rounds, incidentally. Tucker has only once. You know what I'm fascinated with, folks? But these guys don't realize you can win the round in the last 30 seconds or a minute. Just throw, you throw more punches. I think you made that point abundantly clear a few well, weeks ago. I always try to make that point clear to steal the round. Everybody's not Sugar Ray Leonard. I would think it's tougher for a guy like Buster Douglas or Tony Tucker to steal around than it is for you. Well, that is true, but, but then again, I mean, uh, the caliber of fighters that both guys, or the stage of fighters that these both guys are, they can still do it. Man. They may not throw as many punches, but again, they can pull it on. See now, Tucker now is starting to come back to life just a little bit, but he fights more so in spurts. Douglas definitely taking a bit of a blow here in this round. I'm not real sure Tucker's taking advantage of it. Remember, they were telling him he got to get off first. So far, nobody's punching. Well, that round won't go into the time capsule. I'm in 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 the Hands, and I'm going both hands now. But the guy, you understand, he never been, been hurt in things like two nights. Harold, how do you have the fight now? Larry, I got it four to four. I think in, in, in the fifth round, Buster Douglas picked up the action and grabbed the next three rounds, but Tony Tucker came on to capture the eighth and even it up. Okay, I gave Tony Tucker the eighth round as well, but I had only given him one round before and scored one round even. So on my card, it's five, two, and one. Douglas. And we start the ninth round. 
getting to that part of the fight where neither man has been before, post 10. Tucker has been there once, Douglas has not been there at all. And the t temperature here has dropped perceptibly also, 74 degrees on the thermometer that is just a few hundred yards from here. And a little bit of a breeze that's cooling things down. You can tell the, the caliber of fighters these guys have been up against by the way they're fighting, the experience that they're displaying. Uh, they're young, and once again, they're young, and they can learn more as they get more fights under their belt. But uh, at this point here, it's just two fighters, two ordinary fighters. Well, the fight is going to be won or lost over the course of the next six rounds. And if our two judges, Larry Merchant and Harold Letterman, don't agree, you have an idea that the judges who are watching this for real might not agree either. I think the good news, in fact, these two guys are fighting for the title is the fact that they are in better shape than a lot of the other heavyweights in the division. Now, we saw a couple of whales in there earlier. Greg Page and James Broad, as you mentioned. Right, right hand. Right hand. Now, this is what I've never understood. When guys get a guy going, they let up. And with Tucker, he landed a good right hand, and now he's letting up. Now, Tucker looks to me to be a little bit tired. He doesn't quite have the snap he did. He's breathing through his mouth, sort of gasping a little bit. The same kind of body shot, the right hand to the body of Tucker so he's throwing a couple of those to the head. Because of the left turn of South Paul just in, Douglas turned South Paul and scored. Tempo with the fight has slowed down a great deal here as we wind down toward the end of round nine, coming down toward 10 seconds remaining. If you go down there one more time, it's going to cost you a point. One more time, okay? Come on. I think you heard that at the bell. Well, we want to remind you of some other interesting programming coming your way here on HBO. For the umpteenth year in a row, is it 11, I believe, will be at Wimbledon at the All England Courts. That starts June 22nd. We'll have daily coverage. Larry Merchant and I will be those manufacturer to Atlanta. You're yes, going to make I a guest appearance there. there. Yes, sir. Barry McKay, Arthur Ashe, Billie Jean King. A lot of fun, a lot of work, and a great event. You call it that punch, he came out again for you to punch. Uh -huh. Yeah. Okay. He punched right back. He's like there, pushing back too much. That's Tony Tucker's father's voice you hear. He's yeah. been sort of watching what you want to do, Tony, this is take unfold over. and uh, you push him back can't hardly stand it because Mobby's a lot of money is slipping through their hands. Whichever fighter that does fight Tyson will okay. make a million dollars. We start the 10th round. Pace is slowed. Snapping the punch is not quite what it was for either man. The word epic does not come to mind. Well, these guys have not spent that much energy, although uh, Buster Douglas have put a little bit more into the fight than uh, Tony Tucker. And uh, I thought that crosses guys' minds, especially ones that have never been past 10. Well, you think about the team on them. I know when I bought the knee tears, I thought whether or not I should save some later rounds. But uh, I've burnt that much energy. Mike Tyson said the same thing the first time he went tense. Tillis, you think about it. I mean, it's on your mind. I want to say a little bit for the last two, three rounds. That's the unknowns. You haven't been there before. It's another 15 minutes. But it's no difference, I think. Well, that was a right hand by Tucker. Not a bad shot. And Doug could be right hand with it. He let his man off. This was tired in addition to being hurt. Right hand by Tucker. On Wabe. Tucker presses. Looks 
like punch him. You need more than one punch. Barry, he's come up the left hook. Yep, there. And a right behind him and another right. And Douglas is in deep trouble on the ropes. Almost halfway through the round. Stop the fight. And Mills Lane, I believe, has stopped this one. He has. It's over. Listening to Douglas, unable to do it. And Tony Tucker, with a huge 10th round, has come on to win it after a slow start. I'm a little sick. The fight was ended a bit. He can't close in. And that went nowhere. We saw Douglas seeming to get a little tired in the last few rounds, but we didn't know how tired he was. They got hit with a just anything hard at that point. Well, a big surprise in how quickly it ended, but Tony Tucker, who is clearly the stronger fighter over the last couple of rounds. Let's look at it. There was a hand right. Well, I thought the fight was just probably stopped because you